him because it's new. So we're going to just sing a couple of verses yeah, we, so you can uh, hear it. Uh, and that is number 793. Yeah. We're going to do that one. Just a couple of verses because we know it's new and this is a good chance to learn it. And we're going to teach you all the anthem so you all could join us on the refrain. I'm going to make sure this. Here's the key you want to sing to the letters. Okay.
of us. I've got one more song as a prelude. Now that we, our choir has assembled, please give them a round of applause. Here's what we got. It's good. Okay. And guys, can you scoot over so we can get more of you on the mic? And can sure. you show me up there? Um, and, oh good, all right. And, and you guys, even if you're seeing this for the first time right now, look like you're having a ball. Which one are we right? Keep going.
Good morning, everybody. Let me. So let's hope you had some technical connection happening. Then the default microphone has changed. They're telling me. Okay, good. Hope you can hear us now. Christine, you hearing me all right? Good. Um, right now it's on the piano cam. Let's go back. I don't want to look at the piano cam. So here we go. If the Lord be with you. Good. Thank you. I, we are gathering here. Um, it's good. I, we're seeing who we are today and it's who the choir is today and, and everything else. Um, let me just say, um, Sharon, I'm going to look to you. If there's any, I don't think anybody has said, hey, I want to be a liturgist. If you, if there's anybody you can pull to do that, that would be good. If not, I'll just do it. Okay. Let me just say that. And I got a little sheet right here. Okay. Sorry. I do. Come. On. And you can, don't have to use this, but you can. We are celebrating Brent right now. Celebrate him right now. <laughs> Thank you, Brent. Um, we uh, some announcements as printed in the bulletin. Um, there, there's a good a good number of things. I'm going to adjust my microphones just a little bit. You're hearing me out there. You're hearing me in here. So we're good. So friends, um, uh, today is uh, let's talk. And I'm actually going to in a minute. I'm going to invite James to come up and say something about that. Why don't you work your way up here? But I'm going to slip in a couple of other announcements while we're doing that. Um, I know there was a wonderful kids party yesterday um, that was, thank you, Lucy. Let's celebrate Lucy. Where's Lucy? Right there. Okay. But because she heard that some people like Saturday and some people like Sunday, she has planned not just one, but two. So there is another one happening. The, the one yesterday was fantastic. And there's another one that's going to happen so that adults can participate in Let's Talk. So for children today, there's something going on, a harvest fest fall fest so thank you lucy and while she is doing that um with the kids we want all adults possible to join in for let's talk and i'm going to let james say more about that well good morning for those of you who've been taking part in let's talk you know it's been a tremendous blessing for all of us to just connect and share and just have a wonderful time getting to know each other getting to re-know each other um, and today is what I'm calling the fantastic finale. This is it. This is the big one, the crescendo, the denouement. This is the big one. I want everybody to really have a great time. And actually, maybe it's not going to be the last time, because I'm telling you, as I'm meeting people, oh, I'm getting oh, to oh. know people, um, you're going to be hearing more from me. And you'll have to tell me to stop talking to you, because we've been missing out on that connection. So I pray that you all stay afterward and enjoy um, the fantastic finale. God bless you. Thank you, James. Um, and thank you, James, for all the reminder calls that I know you've been making. Friends, uh, we had a very aspirational goal. It was like a pre-COVID number, 100 relational meetings. We're at 57 right now, which is respectable, or 58, actually. Um, but that means, like, to hit that goal, we need 42. Do the math, that's 42 people here each meeting twice. So that's a lot. We're going to do as much as we can. And we also count the ones here that happen in boxes afterwards. But we really need everybody's help if we're going to hit that. So thank you. Uh, this week, of course, we have prayer every day at 6. Um, the Wednesday study group is being um, postponed for one week because on Wednesday, GBIO is having its forum with almost all of the city council candidates in competitive races and definitely both mayoral candidates. Um, 7 to 8.30, only on Zoom. If you do not do Zoom, I, I will meet you somewhere so you can be on and you can be on with me because we really need at least 25. And I hope we have 100 people, to be honest, because this is important. And I'm going to talk about that more later. Laura, do you want to, Laura Blanton, I'm, I'm, uh, you're, it, it, Shout out if you want to say any more about that, Laura. Because I, I yeah. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, as Burns was saying, we're having a really exciting event um, being put on by GBIO this Wednesday on Zoom at 7 p.m. 
it's um, an incredible opportunity to see all of the, um, not just the mayoral candidates, but the at-large city councilor candidates that will be I'll be able to uh, talk with. And this is really an even if you don't live in Boston, this is an opportunity to show our these future elected officials, our own people power, that our priorities should be their priorities as we work towards social justice. So I've um, posted a link for to register for this event in the chat right here. If you're not on Zoom right now, but you want to come, we'll be sending that you know link around to lots of you on email so that you can get there. And um, we hope that you can join us. Thanks so much. Thank you. And that link is also on your printed bulletin, although it's a lot of letters to type in. Um, in the middle of the sermon, Laura, I'm going to ask you to put that chat, that link up again. You need to register to go. And that's also how we keep track of are we meeting our quota. So friends, we need you for this. More on the way about that, but we really need you. David. Just to throw that out, whoever that wise person was, yes. Um, we, yeah, they pay attention to who calls. So even if you've made up your mind on who you're gonna vote for, we still need you to show up because that shows they take us seriously. Um, so anyway, a little bit more about that later. Um, Christine, do you wanna say anything about the food pantry? Yes, I would love to. Good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a great Sunday morning. Uh, this week we have a food pantry distribution. We will start at 6.15 in the morning and we are looking for um, some good help. We are, we've been really short on help the last couple of sessions uh, for distribution and with approaching Thanksgiving, we really need more people there. So if you could spend uh, a couple hours before work or, or an hour or two during the workday, that would be really appreciated. You can reach out to me um, if you're online in the chat or if you're in person, my phone number's on the freezer in the hall or you can see Laura and she can get you my information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Um, couple of big announcements. Next week is our annual service to remember the saints. Um, I know uh, deacons have been helping us collect names. They're gonna keep doing that in the next few days. You don't need to wait to get a call from your deacon. You can email your names to me. Um, for those of you who may not know this, this is, it's, it's, on, it's All Hallows Eve. It's the day before All Saints Day. And the way we, we mark that here is that we remember loved ones that are important to us, that have gone on to the next life. And we name their names and we type their names. But to pull that off logistically, I need them from you. And the best thing is for you to email them to me, if you would. And the address has been in the announcements for a few weeks now. And then we will do, we will get those names in there. And it's a very special service. So plan on, hope you can be here anyway. Um, Laura. Oh, nice. All right. So it's Derek's birthday. Um, any other birthday this week? It's all about Derek. Derek, we'll see you on YouTube. Happy. Oh, wait a minute. Hold time out. Yes. Kurt Anderson, who's often on there too. All right. For Kurt and for Derek. Happy birthday to you. Happy <coughs> birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Kurt and Derek. Happy birthday to you. All right. Love you all. Walter. Oh, come. Uh, good morning, Forth. I am leading, going back to GBIO, where I'm leading the GBIO Impact Fund at Forth this year. So. Um, I'll be reaching out to many folks here, uh, asking uh, if folks are willing to make a contribution to the support of the work that GBIO does. So many of us have been very generous in the past, and uh, I'm hoping that we can continue that generosity in 2021. Thank you. 
Thank you, Walter. Thank you for assuming that role. Um, the other, the, the last announcement I have is to remind folks that in only two weeks, actually less than two weeks, there is a talent extravaganza. Now, a number of you have told me already you're gonna be a part of it. It's not too late. Do let me know as we put all the pieces together. I think it's gonna be pretty awesome. Um, and we're also raising money. Um, you can certainly be a, a, you know, a, a host committee sponsor kind of person before, let me know, or Alice or Christine Keller, um, that you wanna do that. Um, and we'll have some fun ways to raise money. Um, it, at least one of which is including the Jacobs boys, right? Is that still happening? Oh yes. oh, yes. So you gotta come or watch us on Zoom. It'll be hybrid, but just to see how the Jacobs boys are gonna juggle our way into prosperity, all right? So just come, it's gonna be fantastic. Um, I, and so that's, I, I wanna make sure people know about that. Um, and speaking of talent, um, I know, I, I, my, my, my brother and my sister-in-law and my nephew were all here and we're gonna do some welcoming later, but I did wanna highlight, you know, they were up there singing. So could we just say thank you to Mac and Jody for making music. Um, and we'll do some fuller welcomes a little bit later. All right, friends, if there are no other announcements, um, I should also tell people if you have a prayer request, put it on the chat line and when we get to prayer time, we'll share all of that, okay? Um, if there are no other announcements, please stand and let us call this gathering into a time of worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. This is the temple the Lord has blessed. We are people of God's way, called to live in the light. We are called to serve our neighbor with love in our heart. Alleluia, let us rise, let us worship God. Friends, may the peace of Jesus be with you. And also with you indeed. So we're gonna uh, share that peace with one another. I'm gonna get over to the piano so that we can sing. Choir members, you can join and help us make a joyful. But friends, share the peace. This thing just kills me. Ah. Uh. Can you start strumming there? Yeah. My, this mic is falling apart. Yeah. 
This is Psalm 34, 1 through 2. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Amen. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the beautiful world that you've made, um, that we get to enjoy it each, each morning. Um, thank you for showing us how to follow you and the true path to life. I pray that you bless this day and bless our week and help us to find you in each day. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, please remain standing for our first hymn. Um, we will hear a text about healing today. So we are going to sing of Christ the healer. It's number 793 in your hymnal. If you could turn to that, the words are also printed in your bulletin. People at home, sing with us as we step into this time of reflecting on healing. seated. Good morning, church. We now come to the time in our service where we have a moment of honesty with God, where we can take a breath and reflect that we have not always been the people that we want to be. We're not always the people that God calls us to be. We're not always the people we claim to be when we come here and we remind ourselves of the way of love, of Jesus' call to justice and mercy, we have not always lived up to that way. And so we take a breath, and we remind ourselves and one another that we have sinned, and we bring it all to God. And so together, I invite you to join me in our printed prayer of confession, followed by a time where you just get to share with God whatever it is that's on your heart. Let us pray together. 
forgiving God, we seek your renewing spirit, but we know that we must first clear you away. Help us to do that work, Lord God. Help us to face ourselves and our sins with honesty. Help us to release our burdens and turn our lives around. And gracious God, for the times we refuse to listen or forget to love or shy away from faith or take each other for granted, forgive us. Amen. It is true that we sin, while it is true that we do not live up to the people we are called to be, it is even more true that God lives up to who God says that God is, that God is there with mercy and love and compassion and forgiveness for you and for me and for us. And so I invite you now to rise in body or spirit as we profess that forgiveness to one another. Brothers and sisters, in Christ God calls to us. God declares, you are my beloved. With you I am well pleased. Beloved, God has given us the power of the Holy Spirit that we might heal and repair our broken world. Renewed by God's love, let us proclaim with our whole lives in Jesus Christ, all are loved, forgiven, and redeemed. Amen. kids who are willing to come help me uh, do a story. Ooh, okay, I got one. Really what I need is people, young people willing to spring up. Spring up, yeah, all right. So yes, the athletic prowess is good. And okay, um, can you come over here? Um, I should make sure our camera is getting some of this. It may not, but I'm going to let Christine work some. There, there we go. There it is. Um, and okay. All right. Um, 
All right, so there is your float. You come down. And then what I would like to see is springing up. Can I have you do that? All right, go ahead. Springing up. All right, please clap for her, Lucy. Is um, but it's not only that. You throw the cloak off and you spring up. Can you try that? Okay, can you do that? Sorry, I know I'm making you work really hard. No, it's okay. Yes, all right. One, two, three. Oh, okay. All right. Great prowess. Abe, hey, do you want to do that? You want to spring up? You want it? You want to try? One, two, three. Spring! Awesome! Now, can we do this? Can we? Or, whatever, or drape or whatever, or put on a hand, or it can be on your arm. One, two, three, spring up, look goes off. Okay, there we go. No springing, no. Okay, so what I will say is, I'll show the story later, but if there is a time, let's imagine that, um, um, Lucy, I'm gonna have you do this, okay? Um, and I'm going to ask Laura and Tim with their accompaniments to, to be good. We're, we're, we're going to make this up as we go. Once upon a time, Jesus is with his disciples and he's walking around. Can you walk? Can you walk? Please cheer her on for her walking. We're going to cheer on every kind of, every kind of awesomeness we can. Great. Cheering along. And, and then there is um, a blind person begging for his sustenance with his cloak as part of that and blind beggar says Jesus Jesus son of David son of David have mercy on have me have mercy on me and and Jesus doesn't notice at first and in fact the crowd and I and the crowd says hey beggar person hey, 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 be quiet but the beggar has a very loud voice and says Son of David! Son of David! Have mercy on have me! Have mercy on me! And Jesus stops. And says, and, and says, tell, tell them to come here. Tell them to come here. And the crowd does. And and can I get one whoever I can get? No. Oh, actually, oh, this is the part we practice for. So anybody, this is the part the beggar springs up. The beggar throws the cloak away. Thank you. And there's and and Jesus then says, What do you want? What do you want? And the beggar says, I would like to see again. I would like to see again. And then Jesus does this amazing thing. Because Jesus has seen the mighty spring. Jesus has seen the cloak get tossed. Jesus has seen it all and says, Go, your faith has made you well. Go, your faith has made you well. And the sight came back. And whereas Jesus could have turned and gone this way, actually, or the, the beggar, I should say, he followed him. And that's where the story ends. Would you applaud our young man? And what I want to lift up is the springiness. And I hope at some point when you're feeling, oh, just like you're ready, you can spring up and realize that that's what that person did. Okay, thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. I'll take your And here are some more. And if you want to go to Children's Church, if they want to go in the day, that can happen. Lucy is going to take folks to, or take young people with Raymond to Children's Church now, and this is something you can do. Okay. And, and well, I'm just gonna watch all, thank you, sweetie. We'll just watch all the cords. You're being so careful. I'm very grateful for that. Thank you. Okay. Um, and we'll motion this up. Okay, uh, friends, we go into a time of prayer um, and sharing our joys, sharing our concerns, and we actually always want to celebrate any visitors with us for the first time. I hope some of you are picking up, oh, I'm going to help introduce this person or that person. You've got another minute here to do that. We have beautiful flowers. Um,
um, that we want to share to welcome folks. Um, so Levon is here. He's been here before. This is my nephew, but I'm going to give him a flower. And, and Levon, would you be willing to introduce? We'll bring you the flower. Oh, yeah, you can. Yeah, we'll bring. But with him is Aaron Dickinson, our friend from Synod School in the Midwest and now a student at Wellesley. And we're really glad. And, and you'll want to meet Alice, who loves Wellesley, OK? Um, and if Alexa comes in, you'll want to meet Alexa, too. Yes. Um, oh, here comes the flower. Thank you, Franco, for Aaron. And are there, oh, so Mac and Jody are over there. I was looking for them. Been here before, but they're visiting from a long way. So you get special delivery by Brent. Thank you. And, OK. And let's see. And yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Carrie, really glad you're here. Yeah, what's this? And am I missing anybody? Good. Um, so, friends, I invite you uh, to share any uh, celebrations or concerns here. Um, because we have to relay them so that the people on Zoom hear them, um, it's good to be loud and to be short, okay? I say as I turn to Shorty, all right? And then, well, you can, folks in Zoom, you can also share your request um, to the chat line, and Laura's going to bring those up in a few minutes. Shorty. So we're praying, we're celebrating that Pam is at Marion Manor and gone from, from the place she was before. And we're also praying for Shorty, um, looking probably at an operation involving his, his neck and a tumor there. So we continue those prayers. Alice, I see, yeah. me to do okay i'm just <laughs> it, it, it's wonderful to see you indeed 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 good and to everybody yes um i uh let's see other other prayers actually while we were talking about mary manor i want us to continue to pray for karen who is now at marion manor and obviously sheila's mom who is at marion manor and fred corbett who is at marion manor it is like a fourth church party happening right now at marion manor um and so Keep and pray for all of them. Yes. Um, other prayer requests. Okay. Yeah, Susan. Okay. Yeah. Families dealing with cancer. Thank you very much. All right, and Laura. For families, for kids waiting for the vaccine for children and for that panel, the FDA panel acting on that this week. We got one more short one? Yep. The family of Elijah in New Hampshire in that, that search. Yeah. Heidi? Okay. So a friend of Heidi's who's concerned about her eyesight, 
um, and also for Heidi, who's had a test, a medical test. And we have sugar here too. Sugar, it's good to see you this week. You have been in our, been in our prayers. It's good to see you. Uh, David. All right, so we celebrate good stuff for, De for David and the test that he's been having. All right. Um, okay, friends. Um, Laura, do you have some to share that from the world of Zoom? Um, good morning, friends from Zoom world. Um, with Ken Grant, we pray for the homecoming of Don Wick, who's a friend of our Presbytery and our congregation, um, and whose wife Jane died in September in Florida. Um, healing prayers for Holly Aloise. With Christine, we lift up prayers for calmness and ease of transition in an upsetting situation, an end to frustration and anxiety, and for career and financial guidance and for holes that are felt in families who are missing loved ones. Um, we pray with Mary Jordan, we pray for Kathy Heck's foot to heal and we have a prayer of thanksgiving for rain in California. Um, oh, with Ken Grant, we offer a correction. It was Don Wick who passed away. Okay. So, um, and with Joanne, we offer up prayers for Kelly Murphy, who's been experiencing vertigo. Thank you. Thank you all for sharing. Don was a parish associate here um, some years ago. Some of you may remember Don. <sighs> okay, let us pray. Gracious God, We remember your presence. We celebrate your presence. We name it. And on a beautiful day, we give you thanks for the chance to dwell and love and serve in this place. God, we celebrate those we meet for the first time. We celebrate those that now we get to see every week and in some cases every night at six o'clock. But through it all, God, we ask your blessing as we seek to connect and strengthen those ties that bind. It's not easy to get good at that again, God. We've been great at that. And we're getting, we're, we're, we're using our muscles, we're exercising our muscles, we're stretching, we're meeting, we're connecting, and God, we pray that you bless it all and grant us grace and patience. God, we pray for our nation and our world, especially those uh, right now waiting for the vaccine and approval to have the vaccine. And God, we pray for those reluctant or resistant as well. We pray for peace and think of the homeless near us and around the world. We pray for justice and think of those who have been kept down. And we pray, God, for extravagant tenderness as we work with each other and heal with each other and dwell with you. These things we pray in the name of Jesus and now use his words, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Amen. Let us continue our prayer and song softly and tenderly. It's being called. It's about being called. Uh, hymn number 418. I love the way you play this, Michelle. <laughs> 
if you're willing. Um, please stand as you're able and let's sing softly and tenderly. The words are printed in the bulletin. Christine or Andy, let's see, can you get the camera on me? That's, or maybe that's just, the way, oh, I am on that one, but now, there we go. Thank you very much. Um, uh, we have one reading that's from the gospel, the gospel according to Mark. And I just want to remind you, um, because we've been hearing, we've been marching our way through the gospel of Mark. Mark tells the story of Jesus. At the beginning, he's baptized. He goes into the wilderness. And he's doing very, very important things in the Northland. They call it the Galilee, around the Sea of Galilee, all right? And then he makes this journey that we've been following for a few weeks now, making his way down to Jerusalem. And what you're about to hear is the story right before 
Jesus enters Jerusalem. You might know that day of entering Jerusalem is Palm Sunday. And you know what happens after Palm Sunday, amen? Yeah. Just wanna make sure you know where we are in the story. It's chapter 10, verse 46. After all this work up north, Jesus is about to enter Jerusalem and all those events that you know well. All right, listen to the word of God. Then they entered Jericho. And as Jesus and his disciples and the crowd left Jericho, there was a blind, a blind beggar, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, is what that means, sitting by the side of the road. When Bartimaeus heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began shouting, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the crowd sternly told him to be quiet. Shush. But he said it even more loud. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and stood still. And told people in the crowd, call him here. So they, people in the crowd, went to him and said, take heart. Rise up, get up, he's calling you. And the blind man, Bartimaeus, throwing off his cloak, sprang up and went to him. And Jesus said, what do you want from me? He said, I, let me, let me see again. He said, Rabbi, teacher, Rabboni, let me see again. And then Jesus said, go, your faith. I'm gonna do this at all the microphones. Your faith, your faith your faith your faith has made you well immediately he could see again and he followed jesus on the way may god add a blessing to our hearing and abiding with that story Choir, if you would join us. Friends, as they get ready, I want to remind you, this is the refrain we practiced. All y'all get to sing it.
Good morning again, everybody. I'd ask that you join me in the spirit of prayer, and we're going to give the microphone a chance, I mean the camera, a chance to find me. It's there. It's such a funny thing. The screen is disorienting because it's not doing it on mine. So let me ignore that, and let's pray. Gracious God, um, again, thank you for this day. And this time to practice, this time to reflect together, see each other, connect with each other, challenge each other, heal and comfort each other, be with each other as you are with us. Bless these, these moments of reflection now, God, and guide my words. Amen. So I'm going to turn up the mic, turn down the camera. You can see me, you can hear me out there, right? We're okay. Laura's got a link I'm going to have put up in a little bit, but I want to hold off on that. Friends, we have been doing some thick, heavy, important theological work the last several weeks. The lectionary sends us through Job, that very, very important classic story of wrestling with suffering. What does it all mean, right? We've also been walking through the epistle to the Hebrews. 
And we do that not only on Sunday mornings with me and guest preachers like Becca and Joe, who might be out there now, I'm not sure. Joe, who was here last week. Um, Shannon has been giving us the same text during the week. So we've heard James and other folks weigh in during the week on, on the story of Job and the letter to the Hebrews and some of these same passages from Mark. We've been doing some thick, heavy, important theological work. Say amen. amen. And those readings are out there today, again, kind of the closing of Job and another step along the way with the high priest approach of Hebrews, and that's important. But I have to be very, very honest with you. I looked on Monday, I looked at the readings before me, and I read about Bartimaeus, somebody who's sick and wants to get better. And I said, oh, that's where I want to be. Pretty simple story of healing. But as I was thinking of the wonderful theological work we've been doing, this was Monday when I was looking at this. You know Monday, Susan. <laughs> Monday, I was having a medical test. And I was not eating because of that. And it went fine, by the way, as near as I tell, can tell. They haven't called me to say it was an emergency or anything, so I assume everything is okay. But I had a test and I wasn't eating. And there were some other challenges that were going on pretty important challenges. And I thought, man, I just wanna take this healing story and curl up with it. I just wanna be here with somebody who is sick and they wanna get better as we sing in that old gospel song, Jesus on the main line. If you're sick and you wanna get better, tell them what you want, amen? And that's why I said, oh, this is going to be one of those verses that I'm going to try to memorize. And I saw some of you reading the book. That's why I did some changes and repeats there. I know you, I don't say, oh, they're, they're testing me. They're going to see if I really have this memorized. I sort of do. But I'm going to take some liberties, all right? And, but the importance is just sitting with that, that story, okay? That's what I needed to do on Monday, and it's what I've done all week. And I'm glad I did. Let me tell you a little bit about the story. And I, I said some of this before. A gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, they tell the story of Jesus, right? Mark, they say, is probably the oldest. It's kind of the template from which Matthew and Luke are written. And it certainly influenced John as well. So this is the short, it's the shortest of the gospel. And it's telling the story of Jesus. And Mark doesn't tell us about him being born. He starts right when Jesus is an adult, up in his hometown area, Nazareth, Galilee, up in the northern part of Judea. Jesus is baptized. He goes through the wilderness. And then he starts doing these amazing things. He's healing. He's beholding people who have demonic spirits, and he's casting them out. He's challenging. He's calling helpers. He's doing the stuff that you know about in the life of Jesus, right? And they're wondrous things when we come up to this story. And this is when he's on his way down from Galilee to Jericho, which is pretty much right before Jerusalem. And you know what's going to happen in Jerusalem. You know that story. But on his way there, right before he goes into Jerusalem, this happens. It is the last episode before the passion. And just in case, you know, just to remind you, I think we said this, I don't know, six weeks ago, up around chapter eight, he's in Bethsaida, which is by Galilee. And he's making his trip down and he's warning the disciples, hey, I'm gonna suffer. Hey, I'm gonna be killed. Hey. I'm going to show you there's a life beyond that on the other side. He warns them three times. Three is important, right? But you might not remember this. At the beginning of that journey in Bethsaida, there's something that happens. There's another healing of a blind person. You know that? You might know this story. 
You might remember it, because I, I forget if somebody preached on this recently or not. But you know the story. This is the story where there's somebody who's blind, and Jesus is going to heal him, and Jesus gets to work and, and gets some dirt and, he, and mud and puts spit into it, right? He puts mud in the eye, and it doesn't quite take the first time. It's sort of funny to think about that, right? Oh, oh, Jesus has got to do it again. So a little bit more dirt, a little more spit, a little bit more mud. Ah, it takes. It's a great story. It's a great Sunday school story. In fact, whenever I think of it, I think back to when my kids were little, getting these stories in Sunday school. And once we went to a meeting at Jackie Breen's house over here, and I think Lorraine was working, you know, it was a Saturday morning and she was on call or something. And I had all my kids with me. Come on, we're going to the fundraising meeting together at Jackie Breen's house. There we go. And Jackie introduced us to her dog and said, well, you know, this dog is blind. And Nathan, who was maybe five or six at the time, said, well, you should put some mud in his eye then. <laughs> because that's what they're teaching us in Sunday school, you know. Um, um, so anyway, you, you know that story, right? Well, have you noticed how this story is different? What's similar? It's another person who can't see. What's similar? It's somebody who wants to be healed. But notice what happens in the story. It's fun to memorize these things because you just can feel each detail in your bone. Like I said, I needed to sit with this story this week. I needed it. He's down here on the ground and people say, hush. You know, and he's saying, Jesus, I, I need mercy. Have mercy on me. And everybody's trying to get him to shut up. And he insists. No, I need help. And Jesus says, come on over here. And he comes over. He doesn't just walk over here. I couldn't get my kids to do it, but I wouldn't do it. Dang it. He, this is going to kill my knee. But, you know, like he sprung up like this. He sprung up and he had the cloak with him. A cloak that was his livelihood. A cloak that probably kept him warm when the wind blew. A cloak that he used to receive whatever offerings people would give him, and he tossed it aside, and he went up to Jesus. And Jesus said, what do you need? And he says, I, I wanna see again. I'm not seeing all I should see. I wanna see more. I wanna see the, like I used to see, I guess. And then Jesus says, yeah, go. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. Your naming that you needed mercy. Your calling out to me. Your springing up. Your taking what's covering up your life and putting it down. All of that is making you well. See, there are so many wondrous things does in his, G in his ministry. There are so many wondrous things Jesus does in Galilee. Teaching, healing, casting out evil spirits, challenging, comforting, healing some more, putting mud in an eye and healing it. But he's doing something even more wondrous now. And this is what I hope you see. This is what I think is the point of chapters 8 and 9 and 10 as Jesus is about to step into Jerusalem and face horrific suffering. Jesus is telling us, you can be part of the healing. Yes, Jesus can heal. Yes, Jesus can put his hand on your eye. But what he's doing right now is saying, look it. In your recognition, in your call for mercy, in your springing up, in your faith, in your leaning in, you are part of the healing, not only of yourself, but of the world. And you can imagine how important this wondrous work of Jesus is because he's getting ready to say goodbye to the disciples. It is critical that they understand, wait a minute, this Messiah is not gonna be next to me always and forever in the same way he is beside me now. Jesus is saying, you are part of this. Claim it, my friends, claim it. I had to, on Monday,
go next to this wonderful episode because I needed it, because I needed healing. I am convinced that lots of us, I won't say all of us, but a whole lot of us need healing. What I keep bumping into in all kinds of places where I'm active and busy and doing church work and non-church work is, is people having a hard time just kind of working together again. And it's okay. I think every one of us has the capacity to be grumpy Gus. Some of us a lot. We've all got our rough spots. But I think coming together, whether it's in this community or in other communities, can moderate that, can check ourselves, can, I don't know, we're like we're accountability to each other. It's like we're these stones that have sharp edges, but we're in a bag together and that softens our edges when we are practicing being together. And I suppose there's a way to apply that to couples and relationships and things too. I'm not going there. I'm just saying we need each other to be our best selves. That's what I, I'm saying. And we're way out of practice. And a lot of times in my life, I bump into that and I see it in myself and I see it in others. So I'm just here to say, inspired by Bartimaeus and inspired by the Lord Jesus, that we are invited to rise up take our cloaks off, own that we need mercy, and be a part of the healing. To be a part of the healing. Would you say amen? amen. And that is the call today. Now I've been promising all service that I'm gonna give you a pitch for GBIO. Here is the short pitch, okay? Here is the short, short pitch. I know some of you don't live in Boston and don't have a vote. I know that. I know some of you have already figured out who you're gonna vote for. Cool. Some of you may have voted, like you can vote now, right? Yesterday or whatever, it's great. We're not just going to the forum to say, oh, I'm gonna kind of observe and watch. We're going to the forum so that when the candidates and there, somebody there is gonna be our next municipal government, it's gonna be a very different city hall. Different people are gonna be down there, all right? And whoever is going to be down there, I want them to look on their Zoom screen and say, oh my gosh, we got 800 people here. I better pay attention to this group when they ask me questions about affordable housing. I better pay attention to this group when they ask me questions about more mental health providers in Boston public schools. God knows we need that, right? I want to, I want to pay attention to them when they ask me about mass and casts. You get it? This is a way, only one way, not the only, it is one way for every person here to rise up, put your cloak down, and be a part of healing in a city that is wounded, in a country that is bruised. It's not the only thing. It's one 90-minute episode. There's much more for us to do with each other and in our neighborhood and for the rest of the country. But because I love for us to have a chance to take Bartimaeus and apply it, here is your invitation. Laura, I hope you put it in chat, okay? You go there, you register, and you participate. Rise up, rise up, because our faith, our standing up, our recognition of what we need and our neighbors need, that is a part of the holy healing. And what Jesus has been saying on the way to Jerusalem is, well, I can do amazing things with mud and spit. You can do amazing things too. Own it and walk with me. Amen. Friends, will you rise in body or spirit as we join together in our unison prayer? 
Lord, open unto me. Open unto me light for my darkness. Open unto me courage for my fear. Open unto me hope for my despair. Open unto me peace for my turmoil. Open unto me joy for my sorrow. Open unto me strength for my weakness. Open unto me wisdom for my confusion. Open unto me forgiveness for my sins. Open unto me love for my hates. Open unto me thyself for myself. Lord, Lord, open unto me. Amen. Amen. This is a busy and beautiful church, and in order to support that, we give what we have been given back to God. And so I invite you now to give that, uh, to place your offering in the offering plate as we sing, we've been down this road before. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you.
God, we give you thanks for your blessings upon blessings and pray now that you anoint these gifts in our desire to serve and love and be a part of your healing. Amen. Friends, please remain standing for our final hymn, The Summons, which is number 726. I'm glad the choir is coming up. We need you uh, to sing. And anybody who wants to join the choir now, you feel free. Join us as we sing this song. You want to play it? Sure. I'll play it if you want, but go ahead. No, don't you play it. Don't you play it. Um, Love hearing Michelle again, right? Amen? Amen. All right. Okay, we, let's sing together.
Um, I'm going to ask for a little travel music in a minute, but a reminder to everybody that we are doing Let's Talk out back. Annie, I'm pretty sure, has some kind of sandwiches available. Yes, Owen tells me. So if you're participating, sit in the circle. There's, there's a sandwich for you. You can start that while we wait. Um, I am going to look around to see if we have anybody on Zoom doing one-on-ones. And if it's Andy or Christine or whoever leading us. But friends, thank you for being here. Please stay for Let's Talk and anything you want. Thank you. 